Lately, I've been getting a lot of questions about an extremely common barrier to recovery. And that barrier is the fear that because you're unique or because your situation is different, that you can't recover. Either your past experiences make it impossible, your anxieties are too terrible to accept, you need to engage in compulsions right now because you have work commitments or school commitments, therapy won't work for you because your fears aren't irrational, they're things that really happen, Therapist has never heard of your particular symptoms. Nobody else seems to have the same symptoms as you or the same traumatic experience as you or feels pain in the same way you do. There are so many variations on this particular fear. But if I didn't mention your particular reason for feeling that you can't recover, do not worry. That does not mean you are a unique and special snowflake. First of all, know that if you are worried that you can't recover for some reason, you are in a very large group of people. Try to take a step back from what you're experiencing and look at the compulsive pattern at work here because this is a very typical, very normal compulsive pattern. It's very normal to get stuck in this pattern of believing if I don't do X, then I can't do Y. When Y is something that's very healthy, something that we want to do, something that's aligned with our values and aligned with our goals. And so the illness creates this trap for us. When we're struggling with mental illness, it's very normal to create barriers to actually doing the things we want to do in life. When we start out on the path to recovery, the mental illness monster panics. It wants us to keep doing compulsions. And so it very quickly says, hey, you can't recover because of reasons. Reacting to this fear is like reacting to any other fear that your brain throws at you, or any other intrusive thought it comes up with. I mean, it's great. If it thinks that, that's fine. That doesn't have to stop you from doing the things that are gonna make you happy and healthy. If you're cutting out a compulsion and your brain tells you, hey, there's no point bothering with that because you're just gonna relapse anyway, accept that. That's the thing you thought, that's fine. You can think that and cut out the compulsion anyway. Every time you introduce a new healthy activity into your life and your brain tells you, hey, you know what? You're gonna fail at this just like you failed last time. That's fine, you can think that. Agree with it. Say, fine, I'm gonna fail this time, but I'm gonna keep doing this anyway. And I'm gonna bring supports into my life to support doing this healthy activity. Every time your brain tells you that this time is different, you have totally valid reasons to engage in one of your compulsions, even though you are cutting it out, but you're experiencing so much anxiety right now, so much stress, and all of that anxiety and stress and pain will never go away unless you engage in that compulsion. That's fine, that's a thing your brain thinks. It can think that, but continue with doing the healthy things you were doing, the things you know are gonna make you healthy and happy over the long term. When I struggled with mental illnesses, listening to the stuff in my head was a huge part of the problem. So getting over those illnesses meant not doing the thing that got me into that mess in the first place. So that meant not listening to the stuff in my head. Doing more of what got you into this also isn't gonna get you out of it. If you really wanna listen to the stuff in your head, the thing I would ask is, how has that been working out for you? If you think you can't recover, that is a, a neat thing to think. Like, that's totally neat that you have that thought that you can't recover. But I don't really care what you think. And if the thing you want to do is recover, then really ask yourself if it's useful for you to care that you think you can't recover. Because that's getting in the way of the thing you want to do. Judging and discriminating and trying to fit the world into tiny little cages of certainty are a huge part of what gets us into struggling with mental illnesses. And it's totally normal to then extend that compulsion to ourselves to believe that for reason A and B and C, we can't do X and Y and Z. And we create these cages, we create these bars of reasons that prevent us from doing the things we want to do. We judge ourselves and we judge our situations and we create totally logical, completely reasonable cages that trap us in the illness. You will always be able to think of totally rational reasons to engage in compulsions. And you will always be able to think of reasons to avoid doing the healthy things you know you want to do. And you'll always be able to come up with a reason why tomorrow, tomorrow is a much better day to start on recovery. I mean, you just don't feel right right now. We are so good at thinking and it is not helping. Try to recognize that whenever you're thinking of reasons why you can't do the things that you really wanna do in life, the things that you know are gonna be healthy for you, the things that you know are gonna be help make you happy, that is part of the illness. Accept that stuff in your head, whatever that stuff is. 
and do the things that you know are going to take you where you want to go in life.